Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Novel. This edition Stop Stories. The Castries Provisions Market is officially opened as part of the Castries Redevelopment Plan. The Ministry of Health heightens efforts at containing community spread of COVID-19 and $51.4 million is allocated to the Department of Health for the COVID-19 response. A major component of the Castries Redevelopment Plan has been completed. On Sunday, 3rd May 2020, the Castries City Council presided over the official opening of the Castries Provisions Market. Here's Lisa Joseph. The handing over ceremony for the Castries Provisions Market marked the beginning of a new era for the capital city of Castries and the completion of the first phase of the Castries Market Redevelopment Project. The first phase saw the construction of a covered vending area, refurbished comfort stations, and over 100 newly built vending stalls. Opened in 1894, the Castries Market has seen its fair share of transitions over the years, and it keeps getting better. The National Geographic recently listed the Castries Market as third in the world. Prime Minister Honorable Alan Chastney praised the vendors for their resilience and patience during this time, adding that the end result was well worth the wait. There is no more important persons than who we've come here to celebrate today. And I generally mean that, which are the vendors of our country. They are the ambassadors every single day. We talk about tourism, but they're the ones who touch the hand of all the tourists. They're the ones who give the smiles and give the character of our destination. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Economic Development, Claudia Emanuel, highlighted the economic impact of the project. The covered vending area, the construction of the locally manufactured vending stores, and the refurbishment of the comfort stations have come at a cost of EC $5.1 million. These facilities are expected to provide improved working conditions and lead to increased productivity. They also are expected to create a new and exciting shopping experience for vendors and shoppers and boost returns to the economy in general and in the agriculture sector in particular. The first phase of the project was funded via grant funding from the government of the Republic of China, Taiwan. Charge de Fe at the Embassy of the Republic of China, Taiwan, Councillor Bill Yong, said that Taiwan is proud to be a contributor to the project and by extension, the development of St. Lucia. I believe that this, it is an important time for organizing such an event and a milestone in St. Lucia's fight against COVID-19. The completion of the new vending area and the upcoming duty-free stores is a solid pledge to the people of St. Lucia and outside world that the economic recovery is just around the corner. More jobs will be generated and more business opportunities will be created soon. We must have faith and confidence along the way. Mayor of Castries, His Worship Peter St. Francis, highlighted his commitment to working with all stakeholders for the betterment of the city of Castries. To the vendors, he said the best is yet to come. We must recognize the workers amongst us and those who strive for the collective good of a nation. My, my objective is to continue working very closely with all stakeholders, particularly our vendors. So far, I've received, the vendors have received free access to public contract stations, issuance of job letters identifying you as an authorized vendor, awards and recognition for our market fees, registration for our vendors registration program, training and development through the OECS Regional and Competitiveness Program. I must remind you that the work is not yet completed, as the other phase you will give light to the entire project and further enhancement to all vendors. President of the Sinusha Craft and Dry Goods Vendors Association, Peter Isaac, welcomed the new facility. And we hope it will bring about comfort and a comfortable experience for the vendors and also their patrons. We, the Vendors Association, will welcome any development that will bring about 
any improvement to the operation of our members. The Cow Street Market Redevelopment Project consists of three phases to be completed to the tune of 32 million EC dollars. From the Government Information Service, Lisa Joseph reporting. The Ministry of Health and Wellness has completed another week of aggressive contact tracing and broad-based testing for COVID-19 in the continued fight against the highly infectious novel coronavirus. On Sunday, 3rd May, St. Lucia recorded its 18th case of COVID-19. The individual is a 51-year-old male who sought care at a respiratory clinic with a dry cough but none of the accompanying symptoms of COVID-19. The Ministry of Health has ramped up testing in communities to ensure that community spread is contained. Testing for the coronavirus has thus far been limited to symptomatic individuals who presented at the various clinics throughout the island. Director of the Ezra Long Laboratory, Dr. Wayne Felicia, explained that the country had been dependent on the Caribbean Public Health Agency, CARFA, to assist with testing while training local personnel in an effort to develop the capacity for local testing. St. Lucia has since done more tests than CARFA, with a shorter turnaround period. Dr. Felicia noted that efforts are now being channeled into broadening the country's testing capacity. At present, we're testing symptomatic people. And the push is always for greater testing capabilities and increasing the spectrum. And obviously, you've got to move into the realm of asymptomatic people. That is a troublesome population, as how do you define your, the population that you're going to test? So we've had to put groups together, um, groups of personnel from the public, private sector, just to look at how we're going to approach that. And what categories do we put them? Do we put them in very high risk, or high risk, medium risk, or low risk to approach it? Obviously, epidemiology has a, has a major role to play in, in that. Because if you have a cluster of population within a specific area, for example, say, Sufre, mm -hmm. what do you do? You have to attack that population mm -hmm. more significantly as opposed to prioritizing the limited resources that you have right now um, the ability to collect samples from it the human resource to do that it's a bit these are things that we need to play he noted however that while the aim is to increase testing capacity it is not without its challenges as several factors come into play we have limiting factors when you look at testing and it, that also affects our strategy towards testing there's usually a call that Persons would like us to expand the test into at-risk groups, um, essential workers, um, widespread um, clusters of small populations that we think might be more at risk as opposed to others. So what we've done is, due to the limiting capacity, when I say limiting capacity is, or limiting factors, it would be the availability of kits to test to extract the viral components. Also, just the simple biosafety cabinet where you do the print extraction. You can't have two or three persons extracting at the same time because you only have one. Also, the ability to collect samples as well from the various wellness center we have. Um, but at present, we're currently in discussion in multiple groups, public, private, and governmental, to see how we can eliminate some of those limitations. Dr. Felicia indicated that work is being conducted so as to further enhance testing capacity, and that includes the procurement of new equipment. We're trying to also acquire more equipment that can also give us even a greater capacity to test on a daily basis. We're also looking to have our, all our personnel trained to use it. We're also looking to purchase automated systems which will reduce the need for human resource to be re extracting on a hourly or two hour basis for example with extraction you'd have one person being able to extract 15 samples within a two hour period with an automated system you reduce that you increase the number you can extract and you reduce the time with to an hour so that will also increase our volume as well 
The director assured that St. Lucia is utilizing the gold standard recognized globally when conducting tests. Meantime, the government has allocated $51.4 million or 11.72% of the development budget to the Department of Health as part of the COVID-19 response. Prime Minister and Minister for Finance, Honorable Alan Chastney, made the announcement as he presented the estimates of revenue and expenditure for 2020-2021. The allocation will also go towards remedying some issues identified at the OKEU hospital. And St. Lucia will benefit from U.S. $10.5 million activated from World Bank projects to support the country's COVID-19 response. This financing will strengthen St. Lucia's efforts to address the health and economic impacts of the pandemic. The financing for the healthcare system will help increase testing capabilities, build isolation units, and enhance public information campaigns to assist with awareness and prevention. It will also support the rehabilitation of Victoria Hospital and other medical facilities, creating employment for the associated labor-intensive civil works that will also enhance infrastructure resilience. These funds were accessed under the Contingency Emergency Response Components of the St. Lucia Health System Strengthening Project and the Disaster Vulnerability Reduction Project in the amounts of U.S. $5 million and U.S. $5.5 million, respectively. Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Chastney has also informed that government is working with development partners as it guides St. Lucia through the COVID crisis. The government will tap into the National Economic Development Fund, which holds contributions from the Citizenship by Investment Program. However, given the passage of legislation during 2019-2020 for the establishment of an, a National Economic Development Fund, inflows from CIP are expected to be deposited into the NEF. In light of this, revenue for voluntary transfers reflects anticipated receipts of 30 million from the NEF. Mr. Speaker, given the difficult fiscal situation confronting our country, it is my government's intention to make an application to the NEF board to request the use of 30 million to be contributed towards the debt principal requiring a bullet payment. Overall revenue from the voluntary transfers is estimated to increase by 27.3 million over the outturn of 2019-2020 fiscal year. Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Chastney as he presented the 2020-2021 estimates of revenue and expenditure. The Botham Jeff Foundation and Barron's Food have made a significant contribution to the National Mills Program in response to COVID-19. Here's Anisia Antoine. The government of St. Lucia recently hosted a national response telethon, raising in excess of $2.5 million for frontline workers and other vulnerable individuals in society. As St. Lucia continues to fight against the COVID-19 pandemic, non-profit organizations and companies are continuing to give their support towards the provision of the necessary personal protective equipment for frontline workers, as well as the National Meals Programme. Ronald Ramjatan Jr., the executive director of Baron Foods Limited, was on hand to present the donation of $60,000. On behalf of the Baron Foods team, this is just our way as a company, local company, which is well developed in the St. Lucia society, of our way of just giving back to all of our frontliners. And on behalf of everybody, we say thank you. Um, they would have mentioned that we gave an overall donation worth of 60000 so 25 is monetary and 35 in um, products, which is sauces, condiments, spices. The Botham Je Foundation, a non-profit organization focused on providing aid for the most vulnerable, also donated 5,000 EC dollars. Desma Charles is a board member of the Botham Je Foundation. On behalf of the board of directors of the Botham Je Foundation, we are indeed happy and humbled to honor our commitment in assisting our frontline workers who are working so hard to ensure that our lives are saved, that health is preserved, and we take this opportunity to hand over this donation from the Botham Jeff Foundation to aid in such a trying and troublesome time. 
Botham was a very thoughtful, kind, caring, and generous individual, and he would no doubt be at the front line in assisting those who are assisting us. So to carry on his legacy, the foundation saw it fitting to give this donation in aid of our frontline workers who are helping us in this time. Minister for Tourism, Information and Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries, Honorable Dominic Fede, expressed gratitude to the entities for their donations. The 35,000 worth in, um, in products is going to go to a national feeding program and that feeding program um, is going to uh, reach out to the vulnerable. We are attempting to reach at least 10,000 individuals all across St. Lucia. At times, in our COVID response, uh, we will have to um, limit the commercial activities, which would include uh, supermarkets, which would no doubt um, put disabled individuals, elderly individuals, bedridden individuals um, at severe risk. And so what we are attempting to do with care packages and with food is to try to meet them every step of the way. So this will no doubt go a very long way. Um, secondly, I would like to thank um, Ms. Charles and the board of the Botham Jia Foundation uh, for their um, tremendous donation here today. Your foundation is one that's built on faith and courage and hope and tenacity. And um, it's such a, an inspiration to all of St. Lucia. And um, we are very, very grateful that you are coming on board. The St. Lucia Frontline Workers COVID-19 Response GoFundMe campaign has been set up for a 30-day period commencing April 11th for anyone who may want to contribute towards the battle against COVID-19. Individuals can also donate via the National Community Foundation at the Bank of St. Lucia using the account number 1045-11121. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle au Creole. Coronavirus? I am worried, Gasser. It's only old people dying from that. Hold up. Being young does not mean being safe. Yes, it's true that the elderly are at higher risk, but anyone can get the virus. The effect is even worse if you have a chronic condition like hypertension, heart disease, lung disease, and diabetes, or weakness in your immune system. If you are living with these conditions, be extra careful. Wash your hands with soap and water. Use hand sanitizer with at least 60% alcohol when hand washing is not possible. Avoid touching your face. Take steps to boost your immunity through proper nutrition, exercise, rest, and take your medication as prescribed. Limit being around people who have flu symptoms, even close family members. Our health is in our hands. Together, through simple actions, we can stop the spread of coronavirus. This message was brought to you by the Bureau of Health Education of the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. Monsieur Tan Genel, Monsieur Madame Department qui est responsable pour la formation à la gouvernement de la GIS, à ce moment-là, la télévision nationale pays à NTN, qui a posé une nouvelle à Creole. Pour cette fois, Primus Hutchinson. Première phase, projet de redéveloppement facilité, dans la place Neuf Castri, tout va être présenté officiellement pour le Conseil de Ville Castri, dimanche passé, le 3e mois de mai. 2020. Facilité neuf sala, capote yon sans table pour ces weavers la chaîne pour duo, et ni capabilité aussi pour abattre cyclone qui a poussé tepe en force de gwe sec. Facilité neuf la, bâti et puis toute provision pour faire opération ces weavers la plus libre et confortable. Dimon gwen ceremony, Mede Vilkastri, Peterson Francis, weavers qui avant ça, ces weavers la teni marchandises yon si me. Tout côté à terre, et place la pâte ni dégoué présence là qui ont place mérité. Ça c'est en place comme ça. Si c'est long, mais Francis, à présent, je n'ai toutes ces facilités qui nécessaires pour encourager mon pour acheter marchandises de cavane. Quand on est chien, poule, tout pareil qui a passé, 
moun, potentiellement, c'est bah ça à l'air, et puis c'est ça nous voulons. Nous ne pouvons pas faire pièce bagaille à terre encore. Si nous avons moun dans le monde, nous avons gagné manger, nous avons confiance là, à l'aise. Ça est bon manger, nous avons Ministre, qui est responsable pour l'agriculture, honorable Ezekiel Joseph, a une opinion concernant la situation dans la place Castri. C'est un qui est mérité un grand changement. Il déclare que ni lui et le Premier ministre Chasné sont d'accord que l'environnement dans la place là n'a pas été bon pièce de bonnement. Et quand tout hôtel fermé à présent, ça a apporté une grande occasion pour les femmes et les cultivateurs pour vendre les produits. Ça nous a ouvert ici aujourd'hui. Le développement du projet, ça a encouragé cette Lucien pour venir, pour acheter ça nous a produit cette Lucien. Et puis moi, bien content d'être moi, c'est pas du studio ça. Et puis nous avons vu, et puis nous avons patience dans l'autre phase, la phase 2, et puis la phase 3, qui continue. Et puis nous avons créé un environnement pour ce vendeur là qui est satisfait, parce que ça a un bon produit par cette Lucien. C'est le vendeur là qui était placé bon vieux facilité les pompiers pour ce temps qui travaillait et qui a fait un redéveloppement dans la place Castri. Mais il a trouvé un vieux à une place tout nouveau en ces semaines qui a venu. Deuxième phase là, il a une facilité qu'on magasin. Ça c'est la deuxième phase du projet de euh, développement. Il y a un restaurant qui est bien fredi, place pour acheter des souvenirs et l'autre coin facilité qui est bien avancé. Le gouvernement en cette ci j'ai décidé pour prendre action pour adresser la situation de plusieurs individus qui ne sont pas en train de rester et qui ont comblé la rue Castri, nuit comme jour. Par conséquent, des maladies corona, la majorité de ces gens là ont trouvé un placé en établissement sport à la vigie. Ça, c'est sports complex, sports complex. Mais ça, c'était pour un petit moment parce que ça n'a pas un établissement qui est supposé servir comme logement pour les gens comme ça. Le Premier ministre honorable Alain Chasny visite l'établissement Salah lundi bon matin en ce pays les autres officiers pour examiner la situation de ce Salah et pour décider en qui meilleure façon pour soulager les conditions. Selon le Premier ministre Chasny, malgré que c'était une vraiment bonne initiative, mais l'année prochaine pour renforcer ces agences-là qui sont engagées pour assister ce monde-là et pour la meilleure façon pour financer et pour mettre l'argent en place pour continuer l'exercice cela. Le Premier ministre Chasné dit qu'il trouvait plein et puis programme national pour soins les plus pauvres et manger et qu'il a considéré plutôt un type pour soins de monde à des gens qui sont plus meilleurs pour tout ce qui est là, trouver manger. Le Premier ministre Chasné a cru que ça a apporté un pile bénéfice aussi pour les cultivateurs et pour tout produit local. Le ministre de la Kine, responsabilité pour santé, honorable Maria Isaac, qui a aussi été visité l'établissement, a déclaré que Appel à ces individus qui en place ça là pas bien portant. Alors j'ai décidé pour faire yo ouais docteur, abe outil docteur pour trouver service médical. Et puis ça moi ni pour faire actuellement c'est garder qui maladie on y mener un docteur, garder qui maladie on y, so that nous kai ça aide yo ba yo assistance là yo besoin. Nous ni des jeunes moun qui j'a capon casser moun ça là, yo point à sous compte yo même yo pas car rien payer pour faire ça. Avec yon y approchant 28, 28 moun en disant la date qui yon ka ou tipe. Se moun sa la se yon chay se moun ou te ka ou ka kouche en ville Castri. Avec um, de la yon pa ka vle weste la, yon just vle pran mache, yon vle tape ko yon ou ron ville la. Avec la pani yon yon ki mouve pi sa. Pase le nou ouwe se moun sa la, nou nou pou sa twete se moun sa la bien. Madame Isaac complimente se moun nan ki ka ou tipe di se edevi di sa la qui n'a pas place pour rester et pour mettre le gouvernement qui est placé dans le meilleur établissement. Je veux relever Saint-Lucie de la manière que nous avons fait le COVID, le virus, de la manière que les gens qui sont bons et que les gens qui sont bons pour les gens qui sont bons pour les gens. Mais ils n'ont pas place pour ça, mettre ces gens là. Et cette place là, c'est part du complexe sports complex. Donc ils n'ont pas à rester là et puis ces gens là. Mais ils n'ont pas à rester là. 24/7 qu'on y opé avec ces merci bon Dieu y a couillé à sous nous pour montrer nos dates qui s'est faite, so dat nous allonger en la main et puis aider yo. So jodi a mon kai gade comme docteur moi ça joine pour venir venir où est ce monde ça là qui malade là et avec gade qui ça nous ça fait ba yo ba yo oui med là et puis toute bagarre comme ça. 
cette le ci ka enregistré yo ka neuf de maladie corona mais yo ja enregistré depuis dimanche le 3e mois de mai cette le ci enregistré yo ka nouveau et ça j'ai porté le mois qui cette le ci ni pour le mois 18 en total de 52 cas trouvé testé ça me passé deuxièmement mois de mai et individu c'est un homme à l'âge de 52 l'année et c'est un qui pas jamais voyagé alors département santé qui a pris en cours d'investigation à ce route lui dit en temps ça là on peut dire qui individu c'est un en c'est l'hôpital PIA il est à présent qui est responsable pour traitement maladie corona mais il a fait assez bien il y a un gars des services santé qui est responsable pour faire investigation pour savoir qui quantité de monde qui tenait contact et puis monde là qui trouvait maladie j'ai après toutes ces actions qui nécessaire pour quarantine et identifier monde qui tenait contact et puis monsieur ça là département santé très concerné à ce degré ca maladie corona ça là qui est sorti en face à est pays comme il va continuer trouver rapport qui monde ca continuer à trouver un pays et légalement département santé public ca continuer pour encourager public là pour suivre toutes ces règles là qui en place et pour servir masse à ce fait j'ai sanitaire la ville là mais puis de savon et depuis ou senti ou malade à des gros ça là et ça c'est à l'air ça c'est à l'air pour outil docteur et c'est comme ça notre bout nouvelle là monsieur madame mon cher monsieur autre pour regarder mon cher bonne invitation pour chercher plus mon accord c'est de conserver la vie dans les postes de l'autre nouvelle à créole après ça mon cher vieux président au général merci à Pil Primus that brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.